Good morning, friends, and today we are going into town again. Um, I want to talk to you about prescription issues. It's basically been my morning, that's been an issue the last few days. For those of you who have to get frequent prescriptions, you'll understand this. Those who don't, that's okay, I'll see you on the next one. I am running some errands too, getting my booth updated, um, and yet another doctor's appointment. I'm going to the rheumatologist today. So, let's get going and we'll talk on the way. So we're in town now in Billings and I'm running a couple errands. Something has come up at my pharmacy. I use um, one of the um, national chains of pharmacies and they I've noticed that there's been a lag in my prescriptions getting filled. I know that a lot of them are auto refill. And when I went into town last week on my regular Tuesday, I expected to get the text that it was ready and it didn't and I forgot all about it you know when I went home and then it's like a couple days later it's like I really need those now and what had happened was they have no pharmacists in their pharmacy and because of that they're closed um, it took me a while to figure out that they were totally closed because when I called them they were closed I thought oh maybe they're on lunch whatever but they're totally closed there's nobody in there at all that can pick up that, that you can get prescriptions from that you can ask questions the only way I found out about this was to call the store and talk to one of the people on the floor and they said oh we don't have a pharmacist and it's closed and, and it's like why didn't anyone tell us and um, just give us a heads up. So I was like, okay, I need these things, so let's send it to another pharmacy in town, the same chain, because they have all my information. So they said, yep, yeah, so that's a good solution, right? Except for there's a couple prescriptions that were in the queue to be auto refilled. Because they are stuck in that, I can't transfer them. The only way to get them released is either to get information from my doctor or by um, having the pr original pharmacy release them, which they're not open. Um, I did manage to get a few of those from my doctor, but a couple of them they're telling me that I can't get because I already refilled them and I didn't because they're stuck in transit. So. If you're doing auto refill on your prescriptions, be warned and keep watch. Be be attuned to those little cues that something's not going right because this is frustrating. There um, there's a couple of prescriptions like for my insulin needle pen tips. I only have less than a week left and they're stuck. So once that's done, I don't know how I'm going to apply my use insulin and I need it for, on a daily basis. Another one is my Dexcom. I need a new sensor. Yeah, and, and it's in transit. And I'm out today and I'm without a Dexcom. And I know it's not life and death, but it's something that I've become dependent on. So that is my pharmacy story. <laughs> it's very frustrating. Today I'm going to be stopping into the clinic today um, or to the pharmacy today physically, um, the new one that I want to go to and see if I can get it all transferred. And then I'm really going to rethink, am I going to continue with this chain of pharmacy? It's been very convenient when it works, but they're not very good when they don't work. So here's my little pharmacy chat with you. Be warned about auto refills. Keep on top of them and uh, maybe even jot them down in your planner in your notebook when they're supposed to be done. A lot of it's up to us to make sure to keep track of things and make sure things are going um, because nobody's looking out for us like we are looking out for us. All right, I'm going to go in and get some lunch. I just ran my errand at uh, the pharmacy the new one that I want to go to and they had a sign going into the store that says if you can't be nice to the pharmacy who have come here to work something like that then that you will not be serviced I'm like what is going on here they're, they're probably getting a lot of the fallout from the other pharmacy but still people be nice so I was sure to be polite and very nice I usually am anyways so he got things started and they should have my my stuff that he needs soon so um, I'm just transferring pharmacies and this one was recommended um, because they said that their pharmacists have been there for a long time so I'm hoping that will be the case for a long time to come all right, I'm at Marketplace now. I'm just going to do a little boost stock, and then I have to go to my rheumatology appointment. Isn't that fun? Yes. Isn't that what you want to do on your errand day? Let's get going.
morning friends it's the next day and I finished I'm actually at Merca place again I have to go back to the clinic today because yesterday they went over I went to my rheumatologist and we haven't really seen a lot of improvements with the meds and treatments that they've tried for me they're gonna do some more tests so I have to go back today there and then I have pool therapy and <laughs> one thing that started was they started me on another tapering series of prednisone. And last time I did prednisone, it, it did help me. And it was the last time I was able to hike in the mountain. So take advantage of the drugs while I can. <laughs> um, and I do have one more update too. Last week when I was at my regular doctor, she had done, because I had some back aches and some weird aches that didn't line up with the autoimmune and other stuff that I have, she had some x-rays done of my lower back. And I actually have to go to my lab now, so, um, and I'll tell you about it afterwards. I'll catch you later. Well, as predicted, I arrived here for the valley parking because um, it just helps me to be mobile better and it's backed up again so I'm gonna chat to you about the back issue when I was about in sixth grade they used to do back checks on us in, in grade school and they discovered that I have a curvature in my spine it would eventually cripple me by the age of 20 if it continued so I had the surgery had rods and clips put in my back it was pretty major <laughs> of course especially for you know a young kid then it was fine I mean I, w I recovered well but now that I'm older I think those rods are, are um, uh, affecting me and it might be the what is causing the muscle weakness and some of the pinched nerves and the back aches these rods that I had in my back I did some research on them because I didn't know what they were called before but now I do from the x-ray them they they use them from the 60s to the 80s they recommended I get an MRI and I'm debating that when to get it because of insurance we basically have to get pay for it out of our pocket Merry Christmas <laughs> so anyways uh, I gotta get those postcards selling so I can afford my MRI um, so I think the lines gonna be moving here I hope so get in for my labs so I'm done with my appointment and now I'm at my the place where I have my pool therapy. I call it water therapy, but it's pool therapy. Basically what I do is walk in the pool and then hang for a while and do a few little movements and it's not a lot, but it's enough to wipe me out for the next day. The the back surgery thing, it really was surprising to me. I mean it shouldn't be because it was a pretty major surgery and there's metal rods and clips in my back so it's always there but I haven't really thought it brought it to the forefront of thinking are there long-term effects of having these things in my body this is a thing that is actually um, causing some issues with me I will tell you about it um, and I tell you this because um, not to say hey look what's wrong with me this time it is to raise awareness of these issues and to if other people are going through this that you're not alone um, you may not have the same things that I do I want you to know that you're not alone in suffering with things and uh, unfortunately the way to be empath will truly give you empathy is to experience it or to see other people going through it which, yeah, I mean, who really knew what this life is like day in and day out? I'm going to go into my pool therapy, get my swimsuit on. I'm not going to show you that. And then I am going to pick up a good lunch as a reward for two days in a row going in for medical appointments. Okay, it's sushi. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> but it's my favorite sushi. Okay, I'm going to get going. So I have had some lunch and I'm done with my errands. No wonder it takes years to be able to treat people with autoimmune diseases because they're, everybody is different, everybody has a different combo and there's so many different meds and there's so much they don't know. I mean, for the first time my rheumatologist saw me, he didn't think I was sick. So anyway, um, thank you for coming along on this journey today and I hope that you have a joyful day. Goodbye.